Hey class and welcome to module 5. This week's module is coming to you from Guanajuato, Mexico where we are going to be talking about a new subject here. We're moving away from the UCC and we are now talking about employment and labor law. Now this is a new subject and a very important subject in business law but it really really is a great location for this particular subject because this is the home of a very famous artist and he is part of what is probably one of the most famous incidents of a employee and uh, employer relationship going sour. And in this instance, interestingly enough, it wasn't necessarily a traditional employee-employer relationship. This was actually an artist who was commissioned to do uh, a job for a very famous American businessman. Some of you may be kind of figuring out who I'm talking about already. I'm talking about the Mexican artist Diego Rivera, and this was his hometown. Now, Diego Rivera was hired by the Rockefeller family, John D. Rockefeller and Nelson Rockefeller and, and the entire Rockefeller family to, to paint a, to paint a uh, large mural in the Rockefeller Center back in the 1930s. This, uh, this very famous mural, The Crossroads of Man, uh, was, uh, well, it was, let, let me just put it this way. There was no question what you were getting when you were hiring Diego Rivera to paint a mural for you. Diego v Rivera was a very well-known communist and I know that word gets thrown around a lot, uh, especially today in politics, but no, he was actually you know, a member of the Communist Party, and his art reflected his political leanings. Now, the Rockefellers, obviously, uh, were some of the wealthiest people in America, and they were very familiar with the kind of work that Rivera did. And they did want to get Rivera to paint uh, this mural, understanding perfectly well what, they, uh, what his history was and what his influences as an artist were. After they commissioned him, he prov provided some drawings and sketchings of what he anticipated this, uh, this mural to look like. But, uh, and this is where the story gets a little bit, you know, a little bit uh, disputed, but uh, there were some communist I icons as part of this, which uh, the Rockefeller family was aware of. But there was also uh, in this mural, a, uh, in, in one part of the mural was a uh, very famous uh, uh, communist leader, Vladimir Lenin, which you probably all have heard of. Vladimir Lenin uh, was added to this mural, or he was uh, supposed to be part of this mural from the start. And the Rockefellers started getting a lot of pushback from a lot of different sources saying, you know, you can't have Vladimir Lenin in this mural. So he then contacted Diego Rivera and said, Lenin has to get out, you can't have Lenin in our mural. Diego Rivera was insistent that Lenin stays. And this uh, ended up leading to Diego Rivera being terminated. He was, uh, he was removed from the premise and his mural was destroyed. Uh, so in the Rockefeller Center, you cannot see this mural painted by Diego Rivera anymore. Rivera then went to Mexico City and made a smaller uh, mural, very similar to this, this mural uh, that he originally made in, in New York City. But uh, that mural is long gone. And it's a very, very famous dispute between uh, Rivera, who was commissioned by uh, by the Rockefellers and the Rockefellers who you know own the property and you know there was a lot of argument as to as to how it got to that point now this is a great segue because here's the thing Diego Rivera was not necessarily an employee at will employment at will is very much an American concept and uh, what that basically means is that an employee can walk away from from a job no questions asked you know and just say you know what I, I'm just gonna leave I don't want to work here anymore I don't have to give you a reason I'm, I'm done but at the same time, an employer can terminate a employee uh, with really very little cause or for, with no cause at all. Now that has been the way it operated in the United States for, for, for most of our history until uh, the 20th century. Now in the 20th century, things began to change. Uh, there became what we call public policy exceptions. Uh, and there became a requirement for good cause. There also became a prohibition on firing individuals based on uh, factors such as race, religion, uh, Diego Rivera was terminated, but he was not an employee. He was, for all intents and purposes, an independent contractor. So it really is a good segue into uh, a discussion about employment law because, again, uh, if let's say Diego Rivera was actually an employee, let's uh, say the Rockefeller said, we are hiring you as an employee 
uh, of our corporation, uh, and we're going to hire you in part to paint, and, uh, and, and, and that's going to be your primary duty is to paint this mural. Uh, what, what rights would he have? Would that have been a good cause, except, uh, good cause exception for, uh, for his termination? Or if, if it was determined that this was not a good cause, could he, he, could he have a cause, a cause of action? Or would he have been an employee, employee, employee at will? Uh, these are all questions we can can go into, but we're going to walk around Guanajuato a little bit, check out the food scene. Uh, there's an amazing restaurant here that I heard breakfast is really good there. I'm looking forward to trying it out. They've got a dish called the Diego Rivera, and I'm looking forward to trying that. So let's check out let's check out Guanajuato a little bit, and we'll continue our discussion about employment and labor law. Now, one of the interesting things about walking through Guanajuato is you see the influence that Diego Rivera has had on this community. He is everywhere in all the shops. You're going to find him on the t-shirts. You'll see him on murals. You'll, you'll find a statue. The statue was located right by the Diego Rivera Museum uh, the, at the site of his former house. Uh, it's a really popular museum here in Guanajuato and it's a really neat museum. It's a pretty small one but uh, this is his former home and you can see some of his artwork, learn a little bit about the Mexican art scene, uh, particularly in the early 20th century. And this statue by the museum, it, it was actually, every time I walked by, there was a line of people standing by it waiting to get their photo taken. Not just at the museum. Here in this shop, I found a Diego Rivera statue and with Frida. And, you know, he's really everywhere in this community. And I also found this really awesome ice cream shop. And I got to say this, I mean, I love ice cream because, you know, Tiggers love ice cream. But, man, I, I got to say, they had so many different flavors. I tried the tequila ice cream, which I was kind of leery about because it sounds really gimmicky. Like, one of those things that, you know, people sell because, like, hey, you know, tequila flavored ice cream, you should try it. Totally, yeah. And then it turns out it's terrible. No, it's not terrible. It's actually really good, as you can see here. Uh, well, it is really good. I, I know you can't taste it, but... If you're in Mexico, try the tequila flavored ice cream. It's actually surprisingly good. Now we're going to head over to a famous restaurant in Guanajuato. It's located right next to the theater. It's called Casa Valadez. And I picked that not just because it's famous and it's supposed to have some amazing food, but because they've got a breakfast there called the Diego Rivera. And I figured what better place to continue our lecture. Now, again, talking about Diego Rivera and the Rockefellers, I just want to stress, in the 1930, labor laws were a lot different than they are today. But let's just assume that they were, for the most part, the same. It's important to determine employment status, then, if that's the case. Uh, and that's important because uh, if Diego Rivera is an independent contractor, and he, he, he was, then he would not be protected by the same employment laws that he would be protected by if he was an employee. Uh, so we talked about, you know, a public policy and good cause exceptions. That's not going to apply if he's an independent contractor. Uh, the way to determine status, historically under a common law, and we just got to Casa Valadez, we're going to head on in and grab a seat. But under common law, if the employer controlled the means and uh, controlled uh, had the right to control the means by which the worker performs his or her service, as well as the ends, then he, he was pretty much an employee. Then we had an employer-employee relationship. Uh, but if he basically uh, only controlled the ends, like, hey, paint this mural, build this house, then it was an independent contractor. Now, they brought us some bread right off the bat, and, uh, yeah, this is off to a good start. I mean, it's just bread, but they also brought a fruit salad, and, you know, it's just fruit, but, man, they, they, it's got a nice display. <laughs> they, they put it, they made it look good, so that's a good start. Okay, class, I went ahead and got the Diego Rivera, and this looks absolutely amazing. I'm looking forward to trying this breakfast class not only does this look amazing but it smells great i mean i can smell the peppers in here the corn the, the cheese i really wish i didn't have that ice cream now but again this was a great segue into this week's module because we're talking about the role that uh, rivera and john rockefeller had or their relationship together rockefeller commissioned diego rivera to paint this mural in the rockefeller center rivera added vladimir lenin to this mural and Rockefeller wanted it removed. Now again, if he were simply an employee, there would have been a, a strong argument uh, that he really had to fulfill you know, this obligation that Rockefeller had requested that he take it down. He is an employee if he was hired as an employee, but he wasn't an employee per se. He was an independent contractor. He was, thank you. See, he was in fact a, let me get my coffee here. Gracias. He was, in fact, 
a independent contractor, if you will. And as an independent contractor, his relationship, his employment relationship with Rockefeller was a little different. Is it a proper for him to have been terminated uh, under these circumstances? Was there a public policy for allowing him to fulfill this contract uh, or for allowing him to uh, paint the mural as he, he saw fit? I'm, I'm going to go out on the limb here right now and say I don't think there was any court in the United States in the 1930s that would have said there was a public policy for having Vladimir Lenin added to a mural on, on a, uh, in the Rockefeller Center. But still, uh, that, that's ultimately one of the factors that could uh, Rivera could have used as a defense. There's a public policy for allowing an artist to, to paint the mural as agreed upon. And here's where the, I think that if there was an employment relationship, even if it was an at-will employment relationship, where there could have been a public policy. You see, uh, Rivera and Rockefeller entered into an agreement before, this, uh, before they started painting. If that was part of the agreement beforehand, there could have been a good uh, a public policy, a good faith argument that respecting a contract as it's signed is a public policy. Renegotiating a contract after an employee has started or an independent, independent contractor has started work may not be an appropriate public policy. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and try this class because I, I don't want this food to get cold and this looks amazing. Wow, this, this looks really good class. Let me see how good the Rivera is here. Mm. This is gonna be one of the best breakfasts I had in a long time. This is so good. You gotta see the interior of this too. It's just stuffed. It's got zucchini in here, but I mean, it's just a, it's got a nice kick to it. I mean, it's really spicy. Really appropriately named breakfast, I gotta say, is the Rivera. And I'm glad they had this here because that gives us a perfect segue into this week's module. Make sure that you read the material for this week's module and make sure that you're familiar uh, with the material. If you have any questions, be sure to email me. I'll be happy to answer any questions. We'll catch you next week, class. I'm gonna go ahead and finish my breakfast here.